No, the evil mind of P. Diddy. Want to have a little conversation about this story from about a week ago involving P. Diddy. I'm sure you know who that is. And Cassie, professionally known as Cassie, but her real name is Cassandra Ventura. I'm sure you've heard all about it. A very wicked and sickening story, honestly. Like this, genuinely, like this story made me like sick to my stomach. And I think it's really important that I cover it because I do have a mainly male audience right so i think it's really important to talk about these you know have these conversations because it, it does it does involve a man in power taking advantage of a woman in a very in a very wicked way before we get to that right let's actually paint a picture let me let's go over this entire story together okay so this story starts with cassandra ventura also known as cassie who's a 37 year old singer songwriter and model cassie's music career was never booming all that much she dropped an album, her first and only album, on August 2006. It was a self-titled project that had one really successful song on there. It's called Me and You. That record peaked at number three on Billboard back in 2006. Now, aside from her music career, Cassie has been a successful model ever since she became famous over 10 years ago. One of the most closely, or should I say, one of the most closely connected people to Cassie's name, however, is this man right here, P. Diddy. Puff Daddy, actually, let me take that back because I ain't calling another nigga daddy. Puffy, right? Sean Combs, we all know him. P. Diddy, he's a hip-hop mogul. He's a... He's, he's a sicko. Cassandra met Sean in 2005 when she was 19 years old, and they started officially dating in 2007 when she was 21 years old. Cassandra ended up getting signed to Bad Boy Records shortly after that, and about a year later, they officially became a couple. Sean and Cassandra were together over a decade, and in between that, they had moments of splitting up, getting back together, splitting up again, getting back together again, just for them to eventually officially split up in 2018. They were known by a lot of people as the it couple in the music industry, and the public smiles gave off the impression that they were seemingly in a happy relationship, or so we thought, okay, that's what we always think smiles publicly but behind the scenes you never really know what's going on and that's also why i never judge things off of appearance and i don't think you should as well on the 16th of november 2023 cassandra ventura filed a civil lawsuit against sean where she was claiming that he put her through over a decade's worth of violence abuse and other despicable things according to cassandra she was manipulated into a lifestyle that involved the provision of drugs a whole lot of sexual abuse and what eventually would lead to grape so what i want to do right now is i want to go over some of the bullet points in this lawsuit i want to go over some of the allegations coming from uh, cassandra right that are pinned against sean combs right p diddy puffy and uh i'll be honest like this is really really graphic so if you are sensitive to this kind of stuff that's completely understandable just click off this video right now but one of the bullet points, or should I say the first bullet point says the following. Among other violent and unlawful acts, Mr. Combs graped Mrs. Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Mrs. Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding. He also blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Mrs. Ventura. By the way, <laughs> and this is not a funny topic, but that man was Kid Cudi. So Diddy, Diddy literally blew up Cudi's car because Cassie was seeing Cudi back in 2011. And you know, Diddy, he found out about, he found out about this, right? And so what he did was he literally blew up, did, he blew up Cudi's car. Insane. But the lawsuit continues and says that Diddy also forced Mrs. Ventura to engage in sex acts with male workers while masturbating and filming the encounters. He's a sicko. He at one point also, and this is what the lawsuit continues and says, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby and demanded that Mrs. Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. And he also introduced her to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. And this is what they say on another specific encounter, you know, she had with Diddy, right? Cassie had this very specific encounter with Diddy and this is what happened. So this was back in September 2018 
and Cassie describes how she wanted to essentially leave Diddy, okay? And so she joined him for a dinner, right? And this dinner took place in Malibu. It was at like a, an Italian restaurant. And she was essentially sitting down with Diddy to, you know, bring the news to him. Like, hey, I'm done. This relationship is done. We've been through this. You've done, you've did this to me. So she was going to deliver this news to him, okay? So they went to this restaurant. And in Cassie's mind, this was going to be the final conversation and the final goodbye. However, things turned pretty dark. After they finished eating, they apparently went back to her apartment, which Diddy had paid for. And he allegedly forced himself inside, try to kiss her, and she attempted to push him away because she was uncomfortable, right? And Diddy, allegedly, decided to forcibly rip her clothes off and unbuckled his belt. He then proceeded to grape her as she was attempting at pushing him away and telling him to stop. Cassie, after that, took deliberate steps to completely just cut herself off from Diddy because this was the final straw, according to her, right? Like, this was, she had been through so much with this man. He had put her through so much. And at this moment, in September 2018, after this happened, she was done. So she took the steps in order to completely cut herself off from Diddy. And she did so by leaving the home that he paid for her and she returned the car he had purchased, purchased for her. Because apart from the house that he bought for her, which was under his name, right? This is That's probably why he felt so comfortable doing these things, allegedly. He had also purchased a car for her and uh, she turned the car back, she left the house and she was done. Diddy, according to this lawsuit, created a flyer for a party that was supposed to be hosted by Cassie in Miami, but the thing about this event she was going to host was it wasn't real. It was a smokescreen in order to get Cassie over to Miami so Diddy could have him, have her, I should say, all to himself, right? It was allegedly used as a ploy to get Cassie to fly to Miami. So Diddy want, essentially Diddy wanted to create a little bit of distance between her then boyfriend at the time, which I believe it was actually Ryan Leslie, right? Ryan Leslie, but so he created this fake poster and he got her to Miami. So she flew to Miami thinking that she was going to host an event, but turns out that Diddy just wanted her all to himself. But anyway, she flew to Miami. She met up with Diddy and uh, she apparently, allegedly, she ended up being sexually abused by Diddy after he provided her with copious amounts of drugs. And then on another instance, after a party with Jay-Z, Diddy allegedly brutally beat Cassie inside an Escalade by kicking and hitting her. He then allegedly forced her out of the vehicle and she then caught a cab to her apartment where she spent the next several days in isolation, terrorized. And she was traumatized after this experience, right? And then we have another situation where he allegedly pushed Cassie into the corner of a vehicle and stomped her face in. Diddy's security guard apparently tried to stop this and he tried to de-escalate the situation but failed to do so. Cassie allegedly tried to run and he kicked her in the face once again. The lawsuit states that Cassie was bleeding profusely to the point where she began throwing up as a result of the violent assault. The lawsuit then goes on to state that Diddy panicked after realizing that he had just left physical proof of his abuse and that allegedly prompted him to isolate Cassandra in a hotel suite in Los Angeles for an entire week. So the injuries of this brutal beating could heal and the tangible evidence of abuse was non-existent. And by the way, according to Cassie, everyone who worked around Puff knew exactly what was going on. They all knew what was going on. On another instance, Diddy had this thing that he liked to indulge in, okay? You could call it a fantasy, a fetish, whatever. The fantasy in question is called voyeurism. And for anyone who doesn't know what voyeurism is, let me pull up the definition of it. It's essentially when you get pleasure from watching other people engage in sexual activity. And according to this lawsuit, Diddy stated that it would turn him on if he saw Cassie with another dick. And so he allegedly arranged this thing called a freak off. So Diddy had Cassie himself and a male sex worker wear a masquerade mask. And uh, while they're all high on some kind of drugs, Diddy was allegedly directing Cassie to perform sexual acts on this unknown man, and he was in a cut just enjoying the show. And by the way, this freak-off thing was a common occurrence, and each session lasted for multiple days. 
And uh, yeah, this is only a few instances from the 35 page lawsuit that was filed against Diddy by uh, Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie. So you know how they say innocent until proven guilty? Although I stand by that in every single situation because I'm not the law, can you really even make something like this up? Like the details in his lawsuit, man, it's absolutely mind boggling and obviously despicable. My heart goes out to Cassie because I refuse to believe that this is all fiction. It's way too descriptive. There's too many intricate details in here, man. And also it doesn't help that Diddy's reputation has been highly questionable ever since he got in the industry. Everything from the alleged rumors that he was involved in the attempted hit on Pac's life in 1994 to things of this nature, Diddy has been getting the side eye his entire career rightfully so. Why would she come out now after all these years? That's what a lot of people are asking and I think that's a very lousy question for the simple fact that you can't put a timeline on someone's courage to speak out about going through something like this. When someone goes through something that's as traumatic as this, sometimes they don't speak out at all and take it to their grave because who's gonna believe them? Other times they do but it's way after they've overcame the emotional trauma that was caused upon them. Cause it actually takes a lot out of you to open up about something like this. And from what I know, when a woman gets taken advantage of and abused in this fashion, it's actually not just the event that's traumatizing. It's the fact that she now has to come to terms with what was done to her after the fact that's even more traumatizing. So the heinous act itself being done to her is one thing, but the mental anguish that comes as a result of the abuse is another thing. So she doesn't go through it once, she goes through it twice. In Cassie's case, well, we're unfortunately not talking about a one-off situation. This is something that allegedly happened over the span of a decade, so I can't even imagine what that could do to a human being's brain. The fact that there are so many people who allegedly witnessed this is also very sad. Those are what we call enablers. Not one person had the guts to go against Diddy when he was allegedly doing all this to Cassandra. It's crazy, and it tells you a lot about how dark the music industry can get. Everything is pay to play or pay to hush in this case. And I'm realizing more and more how a lot of the responsibility is on us as men in terms of when or if we see behaviors from other dudes that they could be on something like this. The least you could do is check that behavior. I think that goes a long way because the opposite tends to happen amongst men, especially young men because they want to be on the good side of their brothers, right? And no wonder more women don't speak up by the way. I mean, I've seen a lot of victim blaming on social media after the story and that just tells me that we have a lot of growth to do. Just make sure you fall on the right side of things that's especially relevant to all my guys out there. My heart goes out to Cassie, absolutely horrible what she allegedly went through. At the time of me recording this, this civil case has been settled and the number is at $30 million. Anyway, the evil mind of P. Diddy, any thoughts on his story? Curious to hear what you have to say and I'm sure you're gonna have something to say about it. Definitely let me know in the comment section below and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.